This is section 6.2 on anti-differentiation by substitution. In example 1, we're going to evaluate an indefinite integral. Uh, the antiderivative x squared is 1 third x to the third, and the antiderivative of negative sine of x is actually plus cosine of x, and then we have plus c. Uh, the derivative of this would be x squared minus sine of x, and the derivative of the constant, of course, would be 0. In example number 3, we're going to pay attention to the differential. In other words, the dx, the du, and the dx in each of these. Now, we're going to let f of x equal x to the third plus 1, and we're going to let u equal x squared, and we're going to find each. Well, if we want to integrate f of x dx, that's the integral of x to the third plus 1 dx. And the integral is 1 fourth x to the fourth plus x plus c. In letter B, we're integrating f of u, which is, uh, I shouldn't write that. Let's get rid of all that. Uh, f of u is actually u plugged into f of x. So we're going to integrate u to the third plus 1 du, and that's 1 fourth u to the fourth plus 1 but u is x squared, so this becomes 1 fourth times x squared to the third, whoops, to the fourth, plus 1. So it's 1 fourth x to the eighth plus 1. In letter C, we're integrating f of u, but with respect to x. So f of u is actually the integral of x squared to the third plus 1 dx. So we're going to integrate x to the 6 plus 1. So this is 1 7th uh, x to the 7th plus x plus c. And I forgot the plus c over here because it's an indefinite integral. In example 4, we are going to use substitution to evaluate sine of x e to the cosine x. When you are integrating by substitution, you want to find a function and its derivative and I see the function sine of x, and I see cosine of x, uh, but we're actually going to let, let u equal the cosine of x, and the derivative of u is negative sine of x dx. Well, we have the sine of x dx, we just don't have negative sine of x dx, so we can actually divide both sides by negative 1. Now we do have the sine of x dx, and we're going to turn that into negative du. So what this becomes is, well, the sine of x dx becomes negative du, so we have negative integral, and uh, the cosine of x becomes u, so we have e to the u, and then we have du. Uh, there's the negative du for the sine x dx. So the integral of e to the u is e to the u, so we have negative e to the u plus c, and then we replace uh, u back with cosine. So cosine of x plus c. Now the derivative of this would be e to the cosine of x times the derivative of the inside, which would be negative sine of x, and then the two negatives would become a positive. In example 5, we're going to use substitution again, and we always look for a function to be u let u equal as much as we can, but I want it to be the function so that when we take the derivative, the derivative of x to the third is x squared, but we'll have a constant there which we can deal with. So we're going to let u equal 5 plus 2x to the third, and so the derivative is, well the derivative of 5 would be 0, the derivative is going to be 6x squared. Well we have an x squared, we just don't have the 6x squared. So I'm going to make this 1 sixth du equals x squared, and of course this was dx. So now x squared dx is going to become, this is going to become 1 sixth du, and then I'll let uh, 5 plus 2x to the third be the u. So we end up with this substitution. The x squared and the dx become 1 sixth du, and then 5 plus 2x to the third becomes u, so we have the square root of u. Now we know how to integrate this. This is 1 sixth integral of u to the 1 half du, which is 1 sixth 
uh, and then times. Well, if we add 1 to this, this is going to be u to the 3 halves, and then times 2 thirds, and then plus c. So we end up with, well, this cancels out, leaving a 1 third. So we have 1 ninth times uh, u, which is 5 plus 2x to the third, 2 the 3 halves plus c. Oh. Is it still going? Is it still running? Oh yeah, it's still running, but I had that pasted. In uh, example 6, we're using substitution again, but we don't know what the antiderivative of cotangent of 7x is, so we're going to make this the antiderivative of cosine of 7x over the sine of 7x dx. Now we're going to let, we are going to let u equal the sine of 7x. So that du equals 7 cosine of 7x. And when we make the substitution now, uh, the, the u is going to be the sine of 7x, and I'm going to replace cosine of 7x dx with 1 seventh du. So we have cosine of 7x dx. Now we'll make our replacement. So cosine of 7x dx, this and this become 1 seventh du, and then we have 1 over u, because the u is sine of 7x. Now the antiderivative of 1 over u is the natural log of the absolute value of u. And then plus c, and so we have 1 seventh natural log of the absolute value of sine of 7x plus c. In example 7, we're setting up a substitution with a trigonometric identity. So in letter A, we want to make this into uh, secant squared of 2x dx. And in this case, we're going to let u equal 2x so that du equals 2 dx. And we have the dx, we just don't have the 2. So we have 1 half du equals dx. So we have the integral of, let's see, 1 half du. That's what dx becomes right there. And then uh, we have the secant squared of u. Secant squared of u. So the antiderivative is 1 half tangent of u plus c, and the answer is 1 half tangent of 2x plus c. In letter b, we have the integral of cotangent squared 3x dx, so we can write sine squared of 3x plus cosine squared of 3x equals 1, and then we want to get cotangent out of this, which is cosine over sine, so we're going to divide by sine squared of 3x. We're going to divide everybody by sine squared of 3x, and we have sine squared of 3x. So we end up with 1 plus cotangent squared of 3x equals, let's see, 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared of 3x. So we can replace cotangent squared 3x with cosecant squared 3x minus 1. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to replace this with cosecant squared 3x minus 1 uh, dx. Now we're going to let u equal 3x so that du equals um, 3dx. Well, we don't have a 3dx. We have just a dx. So we're going to have 1 third du equals dx. Well, now the dx is going to become 1 third du. So we have 1 third du, and then this becomes cosecant squared of u minus 1. So this is uh, 1 third times negative cotangent of u minus u, which is negative 1 third cotangent of 3x minus 3x, and then of course plus c. In letter C, 
we are going to change this to uh, cosine of x times cosine squared of x dx and so we can change this into cosine of x times 1 minus sine squared of x dx because uh, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 and we can minus over the sine squared. So we're going to let u equal sine of x, there's the function, and its derivative is cosine, so du equals cosine of x dx, and that's just a straight substitution now, we don't really have to mess with this. So the integral of cosine of x dx becomes just du, and then we have 1 minus u squared, so the integral is u minus 1 third u to the third plus c. And then u is the sine of x. So we have the sine of x minus 1 third sine to the third x plus c. In example 8, we're going to evaluate a definite integral by substitution. So in this case, we're going to find a function and its derivative. And we have that. The function is tangent. The derivative is secant. So we're going to let u equal the tangent of x. And so du will be secant squared of x dx. Well, this is pretty much a straight substitution. Secant of squared x dx is going to become du. So now we have the integral with du, and tangent of x becomes u. Well, if we don't want to substitute back in, we can change 0 and pi over 3. These are really u's. This is the, the lower bound of u, and this is the upper bound of u. So we can change the lower bound. The lower bound is equal to the tangent. Well, these aren't the u's. These are actually the x values. We're changing them to u values. So u of the lower bound is a tangent of 0, which is 0. So, And then the upper bound now, instead of the lower, we have the upper. We have the tangent of pi over 3, which is the square root of 3. So we have 0 to now the square root of 3. Well, the integral of u is 1 half u squared. And we're evaluating this now from 0 to square root of 3. We don't have the c anymore because this is called a definite integral. So we have, let's see, the square root of 3 squared is 3. So we have 3 halves and then minus 0, which is 3 halves. In example 9, we have that absolute value again. So we want to find a, uh, a function and its derivative, and we have that. We're going to let u equal x squared minus 4, and so du, the derivative, equals 2x dx. Well, we have the x, we just don't have the 2, but that's all right. We can just divide both sides by 2, so we have 1 half du equals x dx. So now the x and the dx are going to become 1 half du, 1 half integral du and x squared minus 4 is going to become the u. So we have 1 half natural log of the absolute value of u plus, well we don't have plus c now, this is a, a definite integral. And so uh, I probably want to change the, u, the 0 and the 1 to something. Well u equals 0 squared minus 4 which is negative 4 so now this is negative 4 down here, and the top is going to be 1 squared minus 4, which is negative 3. So the top becomes negative 3. And now you can see why we have the absolute value. That's going to help in this case, since we can't take the natural log of negative values. So this becomes 1 half times natural log of 3 minus natural log of 4, which is 1 half of the natural log of 3 fourths, which we could write as the natural log of the square root of 3 over 2.